help for industry in our price and sales. As vocational and general education and reset for national and global development. Let me first of all welcome you to Cape Coast Technical University and I hope that you have enjoyed your stay so far. I hope everything is all right with all of you. And it's good to hear that. You have a very interesting theme for your con Congress. Promoting peace, free and fair elections in Ghana. What the youth must do. And I think I want to turn it around and actually pose a question. What must the youth do to promote free and fair elections in Ghana? I think it's a very important and very interesting question, I must say. And it's something that requires a lot of critical thinking. It requires a lot of reflection for us to be able to come out with the most appropriate answer to such a question. The youth must play a role in the promotion of peace. The youth must play a role in supporting so that we'll have free and fair elections. But then, unless we actually think deeply on this subject, unless we delve deep, it will be very difficult for us to be to proffer solutions that will, will work. We must understand the dynamics, our current political dynamics. We must understand all that is going on in order for us to provide solutions that will work. Not just to provide any solution at all, but to provide solutions that will work. Because we need solutions, the solutions that will work in our current dispensation. Something very interesting happened a couple of minutes ago. Some people were here, but they decided to leave for some reason. And I was just wondering, why must this be? We're one nation, we are one people. All we're looking for is the development of our nation. When we look at ourselves, we are so many years behind the developed nations. We need to catch up. We may have differences, yes, we all do agree. But there comes a point in time where we must put our differences aside and work together as one people so we can make progress. I lived in China for many years. And whenever I went, most of the times when you went anywhere, they would ask you the country you were coming from. And whenever I said I was coming from Ghana, they set me aside. I was tempted on many occasions to say I was from America. In actual fact, a friend of mine got me a teaching appointment and went and told them that I was from America. I went there the first, two week, first week I taught, the second week I taught again, and then somebody actually asked me a question, where are you from? I could not say I was from America. I had to say I'm from Ghana. Straight away, they found a way of kicking me out just because I am from Ghana. What was the problem? It's all because Ghana is a poor, they thought we were poor, we are a poor nation. And they could not accept for somebody from a poor nation to come and teach them. This is where we are, people. A nation which must develop. We have the raw materials. We have everything required, everything we need to develop. And for, well, we are making tremendous strides under this current government. But we require all hands on deck. And to be able to get there, we require deep thinkers, critical thinkers, who will bring our solutions that will help us. May I suggest two things that you could consider in your discussion? Number one, I think it is important if we're going to have free and fair elections, that you are going to contribute positively to us having free and fair elections, then each youth must commit themselves, must, each youth must make a commitment in mind and in heart to Ghana having free and fair elections. Somebody says that transformational leaders work on the hearts and the mind. And I think it is critical at this stage for us to be able to speak to our hearts and to speak to our minds. That we will say within ourselves that we are committed to free and fair elections in Ghana. If we're able to make any progress, it has to start with the individual. 
It starts with you and it starts with me. You and I making a commitment because whatever will proceed, our actions, whatever actions will be, will proceed from what is in our mind and in our heart. And if we are committed in our minds and in our hearts to a free and fair elections in Ghana, we will do that which is right to bring about what we have determined to do. Secondly, I think that we must commit to seeking the common good rather than individual interest. Somebody says that there are two categories of people in the world, those who are selfish and those who are selfless. Of course, between the two extremes, you have people who are part of one and the part of the other. And I think I tend to agree. They are selfish people and they are selfless people. The selfless man is the one who seeks the welfare of everybody else. He puts the welfare of the nation ahead of his own welfare. Seeks the development of the nation, even if it will affect him. That is what the selfless man will do. The self, selfish man only cares about himself. Give him a contract. Go and construct a road. All he thinks about is what will go into his pocket. He constructs a road after a couple of the road, a years, the road deteriorates. He can't be bothered about it. Why? He is selfish. And I pray that we will make a commitment not to be selfish, but to be selfless. That you and I will leave an impact on the sons of time, something I like to say. We will commit ourselves to the development of the, of the country. We will commit ourselves to the common good, not to our personal interests. When I see young men and women who are Ghana's tomorrow, there's no doubt that in future, some of you are going to become deans, probably become MPs, probably becoming uh, registrars, and maybe even presidents. If you look at national, our national leadership, I mean, at a national level, people like uh, Honorable Ose Chemensa Bonsu, Honorable uh, Map, Idrisu, and the rest, they were all at a point in time students less like you. But we, most of the time, complain about our leaders. But what I'm going to say is that, uh, what kind of leaders are you? We complain about our leaders at the top, but on your own, you are leaders here. Most of the time, we hear of problems in our technical universities. And these are people who are headed for the top. So what kind of leadership are you going to offer to us in the future? Please, like I previously said, let us look into our hearts. Let us look into our hearts. What kind of leaders are we? We complain about everything that can happen at the national level. You complain about our presidents, our MPs, our ministers and whatever. But what kind of complaints do we have about ourselves? I was appointed not long ago by Honorable uh, Professor Ozu Sachre. And I had the opportunity, you know, to look into some of the things that we students do. And to be honest, sometimes I find it very difficult when I see us do some of the things that we do. In terms of our, I'm somebody who sort of say this raw as they are. Sometimes the behavior of some of our student leaders leaves very much to be desired. Our finances, the way we handle the finances, in most cases, is very, very, very poor. So in future, if such people are given opportunity to handle the national finances, what is going to happen? I mean, what will happen? If even at this level of our leadership, we are not able to handle our finances very well, then what kind of leadership we will be able to offer? Or how are we able to handle our finances at the top level? I'm very happy that uh, I can talk to you on these few issues. But like I said, basically uh, everything depends on the, what I call the five P's. Prayer, preparation. Prayer, preparation prevents poor performance. So please, as we live here, let us go back to our places. Prepare in everything that we do 
so that we'll be able to attain our goals. Uh, professor talked about uh, China and about how uh, he was prevented from teaching some time ago. I've also gone through the same process as uh, an old China hand also. I had experience also experiencing exactly what the professor experienced. Please, let us all think of national building because the respect that we have basically is as a result of the state in which our country is in. In China, most African students were not respected because at the time, they asked, where do you come from? So I'm from Ghana, I'm from Togo, I'm from wherever. But what? They preferred talking about uh, people from what states. So most of the time, what do they do? Wherever you go to a program, they'll mention, oh, from US, from France, and from Germany. And when it comes to us, the Africans, what do they say? Other the other countries. So we are the other countries. But what I'm going to say is that, uh, please, as we manage our affairs, let us manage the affairs in the way we expect people to manage them. Because we cannot be managing our own affairs negatively, and then we will expect that at the national level, then our leaders will be managing the affairs positively. We tend most of the time to blame our national leaders. They are corrupt, they are so and so. Where do we get them from? I mean, maybe I'm going to rely a little bit. Where do we get them from? Our national leaders are from our own. They are from within us. So if they are corrupt, is it because we are also corrupt? I am corrupt and you all are corrupt. So please, yes. So please, before I drop down, my, before I drop my back down, please, I want your leaders to eschew greed. Greed, favoritism, etc. And I hope that in the future, amongst you will become registrars, professors, deans, MPs, and maybe even a president. Thank you very much. I was very excited when the registrar uh, spoke about young leaders in this country. Just do a little bit background check of every leader in this country. I don't think that you just get up one day and become the president. You just got up and became a, a, a member of parliament or a minister. What example are you setting? How do young people behave when you are in leadership? Most of us, some of, for example, I am in politics and I move with a lot of the younger generation. But I tell them, listen, I'm a politician, but as a Christian, I believe in what the Bible says, that we should honor our, you know, fathers and our mothers. But what do we see? Young people pick their phones, and then they phone in, and they speak to their president as if the president is nobody. They speak to MPs as if we are nobody. They speak to ministers as if we are nobody. And you are criticizing your leaders. But you have to take a retrospective look at yourself. Once you talk about your leaders, you also have to look at yourself because very soon you are going to be the leaders. Very soon you are going to be the president and the ministers and, you know, the appoint appointees. So whilst we are here and as leaders, let us open ourselves to good grooming. The way we talk, the way we carry ourselves, the way we, lead, we relate to uh, uh, one another. Looking at the theme, what the youth must do, I would admonish all of us that we should refrain from violence. Sometimes when you are with us and you are misbehaving, sometimes please be careful. Please. Again, the respect that we have to give to ourselves as well as our leaders. Very important. How do we speak? Because sometimes some of these violence is packed as a result of, you know, the things we say. You say this, and this person says that. Honestly speaking, I mean, when you come to parliament, it's amazing the way we relate with us, I mean, to one another. People on the minority have friends on the majority. After doing all those debates, it's amazing what happens behind the scenes, because we see ourselves as one family. Just that we all have different, you know, views and opinions.